So I've been writing with AI for a while now, and I see a lot of people keep making the same mistake. They get super robotic outputs from the AI when it comes to writing. They make minor tweaks to the prompt in hopes that the AI will start writing magically more human. But there's a much better and more structured process we can put around this to ensure our AIs write more human-like. Let me walk you through my exact process of how I get AI to write in any human style that I want. Let's dive in. So in this process, I'm gonna take you on a journey of seven steps. And at the very end of these seven steps, we also have a bonus step around advanced lessons I've learned of trying to automate many of these steps here. So the first point we're gonna make is, what is the actual output we're going to get? So the output from this process is going to be two AIs. One AI is going to be a style extractor. So this AI extracts the style that we're interested in mimicking, either your own or somebody else's. Then we have an AI mimicker, which is kind of the, the AI that mimics the writing style we prefer. So this will take in a draft or an idea, and then it'll write in that style that you prefer for the thing you're trying to create. So those are the two outputs. So the very first step we need to figure out is the style we want to mimic. So there could be a variety of people that you're interested in mimicking. So you want you might want to mimic uh, Malcolm Gladwell or Mark Manson or Tim Urban or whoever else. Um, I prefer actually to mimic my own style oftentimes. So I'll kind of extract my own style from the writing I've put out already. So one thing I'd recommend is not combining styles. So I wouldn't recommend combining all three of these styles. Reason being is the AI gets confused. It needs to get really good at, com I would say, focusing in and mimicking one style. And then from that, you can add nuances to it, but I wouldn't combine them. So choose a style you want to pursue, and then that's the first step, either your own or somebody else's. After we've chosen our style, now we need to research exactly what to mimic. That's the question we need to ask ourselves is, if I'm a specialist and I know how to mimic somebody else's writing style, there's probably a series of elements I need to look for to do that. I have no idea what that is, so we need to research that first. Um, I prefer to use perplexity for these types of searches. Reason being is I think that it's good at finding alternate sources of, against uh, ChatGPT or Claude, but in the end, you could really use any AI. They're all really good, and they'll all find similar things that are relevant for this specific task. So here's a base prompt that we can start with, and this prompt states the question that I briefly mentioned. So what are some of the common things a specialist looks for in someone else's writing? So they're able to mimic that writing style identically. I'm thinking tone, vibe, structure, etc. Be as specific as possible. I want to know all the details. The reason I'm, I'm kind of specifying this last piece is I want it to pull out as much data as possible so I can then feed that into another AI in the future. So here's actually an example. So if I click this, it's going to open up perplexity for a previous search that I've done. And this is the exact question I just read off, and it gave me all these responses. So here we have linguistic elements, we have uh, semantic structure, stylistic patterns, et cetera, a whole bunch of things that I never knew about and I probably don't know much information about now. But the beautiful part is, is we can have AI outsource this. And as I mentioned previously, um, you don't have to use perplexity for this. You could use ChatGPT, Claude, Grok, Gemini, et cetera. They're all very good at research. They'll all do the same thing, um, achieve to the same goal. Quick pause in the programming. If you're enjoying this, below is a link to a 30-day AI insight series that's completely free. We get 30, 30 days of insights just like this that will help you utilize AI internally at your business and also in your day-to-day -day work. So if that's interesting, check it out. With that being said, let's jump back in. So once we have our output from the research, we know exactly what to look for. It's time to create our AI extractor. And to do that, the first thing we need to do is create a system prompt. So here is a basic prompt that I often use for most of the system prompts I create. So we're gonna basically state that I want you to research prompting best practices as of today's date. So this is going to be for me, July 12th, for specific model. And in this case, I'm using Claude Sonnet 4. I want you to create a system prompt that sits behind a writing model that extracts or a writing model extractor. So giving it context as to what this system prompt is for. Then I'll give it some more context for that system prompt, which is the purpose of this AI is to take any content, then extract out the writing style for that specific writer. Uh, here are some specific things this AI should look for in the writing to extract from. So this is going to be everything we've gotten from the previous research. We're going to paste that into here. So we're giving our AI a task, which is to research best practices for prompting, then take those learnings and apply that to a system prompt it's going to create for us with understanding the constraints and context here, and also the details that we're putting down here as well. So we're constraining the AI to write a prompt that we prefer. So when we do this, um, we can have a variety of AIs do this. So like, again, it could be ChatGPT, Gemini, Grok, et cetera. In this case, I use Claude. And oftentimes what I see with Claude is when it gives me a system prompt and it does research, you can see I've asked the same exact thing that I've stated previously. So this is exactly what I read to you with slight alter alterations. So we have July 12th, et cetera. Below that is the research findings from Perplexity that I just showed you. I copy and paste all this in and it does some research and then it gives me an output of a prompt. 
But this prompt is pretty beefy. And I've noticed that Sonnet 4 and Opus 4, they tend to be quite wordy when they give outputs. So in this case, it's it's a bit too long, I think, for a prompt and a little bit overwhelming because you can see that this comes out to around five pages for this specific prompt I just showed you. So what I'll often do is to condense this down but still use the best practices for prompting Claude, I'll use Claude's prompt generator. So what I'll do is I'll copy out this prompt and I'll then paste it into their, their prompt generator here. So OpenAI and Claude both offer this, or OpenAI and Anthropic, they both offer this feature where you can utilize um, a prompt generator that improves your prompt in different ways. So if I copy and paste this prompt into this generator and then generate a prompt, it condenses that down to around two pages instead of five, but still utilizes the best practices of XML structure, et cetera. So I'm gonna use this as my system prompt for our AI extractor. Once we have our extractor, we're going to then put the system prompt in and where we're going to give it some samples to extract. So in this case, I, there's two things that I've learned from going through this process many times, both for myself and my clients, is diversity is key. So you wanna give it as many diverse options as possible for the writing samples. So for me, I gave it, I think, five to six examples of my writing style that I think are somewhat diverse based off of content, structure, et cetera. Uh, so this could be usually between four and five samples that are around 10 pages. That's kind of the, the number I aim for, but you could try different ranges and it might work better for you. And here you can see an output of an example of what I just ran. So if we go to the top of this, you can see I gave it one, two, three, four, five, six examples and stated it basically just to extract the style and it came back and gave me my writing style. So now this is our extracted style from the author we want to mimic. So now that we have the extracted style, we need to create another prompt for our writer. So this is going to be very similar to the other prompt that I just shared with you in the same process. So let's read through this really quick. We have um, research best practices for prompting as of today's date for this specific model. I want you to create a system prompt that sits behind a writing model that mimics the specific author's way of writing. The purpose of this AI is to take in a draft then improved upon that piece with the writing style it specializes in. Below are the details and writing style that we're specialized in. Also note that an AI will have access to some writing samples that it's attempting to mimic in its knowledge base, but it's important to only have this AI reference those as inspiration, not to mimic the content. So there's a few things we should call out here. One point is at the beginning, we're giving it a task again to research best practices for prompting before it creates a prompt for us, ensuring that the prompt it writes is following modern best practices as of today. The other thing here is we're giving it a specific uh, context around the purpose of this AI, what it's trying to achieve, as well as some uh, associated context to the detail of what the AI will have access to. And at the very bottom, we're going to call out the fact that we are going to share the specific style it should incorporate into the system prompt. So once we've done this, again, we have an example here. And the same thing situation happened. So I ran it through Claude, had it write the prompt. It started out with four pages. I ran that through the prompt generator, condensed it down to two. So you can, can, again, I'll just quickly show you this example of what it looks like. So if I scroll to the top, we have the same prompt I just shared with you. And then I paste it in all the style information I got from the previous Claude instance. So it gives me the, the uh, style. And I come down here, it does its research, and it gives me a prompt. I then copy and paste this out, run it through the prompt generator, and it gives me a more condensed version. So once we have our system prompt, it's time to create our specific AI, which is going to be in Claude projects. You can use this for Claude projects, custom GPTs, et cetera. And here we have a, our Mimicker writing bot. And I wanna, again, make another caveat here is that you don't have to just use Sonnet 4. You can use a variety of these models. All of these providers offer this ability to create custom AIs, either it's through GPTs or projects or something else, or I think Gemini calls it gems, but it's a way to basically have a system prompt, a knowledge base, and tailoring the AI to a very specific task. So you could use, uh, these are some of the models that I like to use for writing that I've listed out here. And I, there's some caveats associated to each. All of them have pros and cons. You'll figure out which AI is most suitable for your use case based off of trying them. So you just have to keep on trying different models and you'll figure out through tacit learning which model fits you best. Some things that I've noticed is O3 is very good at being concise. So it keeps things very brief, and, brief and, and, and focused, but there's some issues around its citations. So the citations, the formatting specifically, I'm not a big fan of because it just has a sentence and at the end it has the source. Um, I prefer inline citations with the text. But that's just my preference. Um, GPT 4.5 is a pretty good writer. Um, it's kind of slow and also it can be somewhat wordy. And I also think OpenAI is going to deprecate this or already has from the API. So there's some downfalls to this one, but either way, it's a pretty good example to use, at least in the UI for now. Um, Sonnet 4 is my main driver for writing. I prefer to use this for most writing use cases. And if you want a simple tip just to improve your writing without any of this process, just use Sonnet 4 instead of ChatGPT, and you're likely going to get better outputs. With that being said, there, also, there are some downfalls to Sonnet 4. So one, it's pretty wordy uh, when it comes out with stuff. 
But some of the pros are it's very articulate when it comes to explaining a complex task in a simple way and a variety of other things. Also, the citations are really good too, the formatting specifically. Um, Grok 3 and now Grok 4, um, they're pretty good at creative writing. So I found that if you wanted to write something more creative like uh, fantasy or fiction, it's pretty good at that. But I've also seen that this specific model is good at um, talking about topics that are somewhat controversial, things that other models are forced in to not talk about because of how the model providers have, have honed and, and I guess uh, have hamstrung their ability to talk about certain political topics or certain events that happen in history, et cetera. So if that's something you're interested in, I'd recommend focusing on this model to get those types of outputs. And then finally, 2.5 Pro Gemini. It's not really, from my experience, it's not really good at writing um, much of anything, but maybe and you have a big PDF it needs to analyze or something along those lines that it needs to distill down into something that other models can't fit into their context window. So that could be a benefit as well. But maybe you've had better experiences. Okay, and that is our overall process of how to use AI to mimic other writer styles and improve the writing of the AI to be more human. So lastly, I want to end with some bonus advanced lessons learned that I've learned about aggregating these insights. So in the sense that say you like the output of uh, multiple models, because they all have trade offs, right? So say we have four different models that are writing for us the same thing, maybe we want to synthesize these outputs into a single output that takes the best from all of them. If you try to do this, which many of my clients have, and I've done this for a different variety of clients and variety of industries and use cases, I found that in theory, this sounds great, but in practicality, it's actually, there's a lot of edge cases and things you learn through the process. And I wanna share with you the weaknesses of these models today so you don't run into the same issues I ran into, or at least you can mitigate them. And we'll run through this kind of quickly. So here's a basic structure of what this could look like. So down here, we have two models that are getting an input. In this case, let's do this example. Say we give them a report, a report's maybe 50 pages. And the goal of these is to synthesize that 50 page report down into an executive summary that's one page long and follows a specific structure. So we input the PDF and both of these output their synthesized one pagers. And they follow the structure as expected. Once we've done this, they both have good parts to them and we wanna combine them. So we have another model here that synthesizes and aggregates those insights into a final report. So. This, this works kind of, but there's a lot of issues and there's also kind of weaknesses to these models. So first thing is that there's a huge bias in the aggregator if it's the same model that's getting the input. Meaning that if I have Sonnet 4 grading itself, it's going to bias its opinion towards Sonnet 4. It's gonna choose itself like 95% of the time. That's issue number one. The way to fix this is to use a third party model. So instead of Sonnet 4, we could use something like Gemini, which is what I've done in the past. And Gemini will then be the one that chooses which parts to include in the final piece. Some other things that I've ran through um, and I've run into quickly is inline citations. So I prefer my citations to be in line with the text, meaning that if this is text in this line, this portion of the text, the blue part, is going to be a link that's a hyperlink to a source in line with a sentence. But the way that ChatGPT does things often is the citation is at the end of the sentence like this where it's referencing the source. So it'll say Reuters, CNBC, whatever else, and it'll have that at the end. That for me is okay, but it's it's not as aesthetically pleasing and it doesn't kind of logically flow well. So in that case, if that happens, we need to figure out a way to reformat the citations in this middle step with code. The next thing here is sometimes we need to randomize the input. Because even though if we're using a third party option such as Gemini, it will sometimes still bias its opinion. So if that's the case, we need to randomize the input order. So if we have Sonnet 4 as going in first and then 03, we should, on the next iteration, do O3 first and then Sonnet 4 second, and then vice versa and back and forth. So we're randomizing the order to ensure that the bias of the model isn't favored towards any specific input based off of its location. Even with that, sometimes it'll keep biasing. So if it does keep biasing towards a specific model, we need to force the model through the prompt to do a 50-50 split on what it chooses. So for Gemini, in this case, if it's, if it's the one that's doing the aggregation, it needs to choose 50% from O3 and 50% from Sonnet 4. And that'll give us a better um, equalized choice or equalized um, final output that gets the best of both worlds. And then finally, um, even though that we have a model at the top, I recommend not allowing this model here, the Gemini one, to rewrite anything. Because oftentimes if it rewrites the input that has been given from Sonnet 4 and 03 to make them more cohesive, it often gets too far off from the abstract source. So if there's a source document we put in, that's going through one layer, which is this first layer, that's going through another layer of aggregation, and then it's having the final output here. The issue here is if we have this model here, rewrite anything from this, it's going to rewrite too much to the point where it actually doesn't make sense and it's not truly connected to the source material and it distorts what we're trying to achieve. 
So long story short is I recommend allowing the AI to just pick the points from each that it likes. So if there's four points here and four points here from each model, so say this is 03 and this is Sonnet 4, say that it likes, say it likes one, three, and four, and two and three from 03. So it should just choose those and say, I like section one, section three, and section four, and I like section two and four or three from these two models. It sends those choices to some code. The code then extracts these out, copy and paste style, into the final report. So we're not allowing the model to rewrite anything, but just using its intelligence to choose. So those are some of the advanced lessons, and that's the overall process. So if you want to improve the writing of your AI and make it more human, I recommend following this process to mimic a specific style such as yours or somebody else's to improve the output. And if you enjoyed this, reshare it with your friends. And also, like I said previously, below is a link to a free 30-day AI insight series. So if you're at all interested in getting more insights like this in your inbox for 30 days, just click the link below and you'll get more insights on how you can utilize AI in your business more effectively and also in your day-to-day -day work. And internet, with that being said, I'll see you next time.